everybody. I'm Bruce Gaber from Boston. Hi, everyone. I'm Kempton Lamb from Calgary, Canada. Afternoon, everybody. Mike Downs here from uh, Kenilworth, England. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to talk to them um, a little bit. I, I know you guys can't see me, but I'm going to put you up on the screen so okay, you can okay. see. Um, yeah. What this technology does essentially is, is it's a free satellite truck attached to a crowdsourcing tool. So no longer do they have to take this big satellite truck um, out to the UK or Canada oh, or gosh. someplace far away like that. We can connect with them virtually and essentially bring them into our newscast. So during our newscast, we are anchoring the entire newscast um, with this Google Plus hangout. And it rotates every day. We have different projects <coughs> on our side of the couch. Um, but what makes this technology unique not is their ability to come in Via, um, <laughs> <laughs> via an Ethernet cable, but is their ability to do what's called mobile hangouts? How many of you guys have ever done a mobile hangout on your phone? Have you done yet? Oh my gosh. This is something you need to try. Um, I may experiment with this a little bit on YouTube um, as well, but on your phone, you can join one of these hangouts. And then, for instance, um, in our newscast for the last couple of weeks, we had a guy who went live from a boat in Australia. We had another gentleman um, who was live on a. <laughs> there, Bruce is doing it. Yeah, Bruce has it up. Hey, Bruce, tell people about the mobile hangouts. Tell them how they work. So on the, on the mobile hangouts, basically, you have your mobile device, whether it be a pocket phone or whether it be an iPad and you just take it out in the street. You can't start a Hangout from your mobile device yet. However, you can join a Hangout. So for instance, if I was on my mobile device out in the street now and was able to connect, I, was, I would be able to join Sarah's Hangout. And, and Bruce would be able to broadcast live from uh, the street. Like uh, last week or the week before, we have someone from Australia in the middle of uh, the harbor and then broadcasting right from there. From, so, from his mobile phone. So I can Kim give you a, I can give you Kim. a per I'm sorry, Sarah. That's go ahead, go ahead, Bruce. So I can give you a perfect example with you news. We were in a hangout um, just last week with a friend of ours, Michael Mozart, who's a, a very big YouTube partner and so forth and so on. And he happened to be in the streets of New York, occupied Wall Street, as it were. And Angie, back at the news station, was able to take. Michael Mozart live from his iPad through the Hangout and put him on ear like that in a snap. It was like so yes. powerful to, to be part of all of that. It was just truly yes. amazing to be able to go from the streets of New York from a pocket device basically to on ear. And that was with no Ethernet cable, no satellite truck, no nothing. We've also interviewed people right after the um, Norway bombings in Oslo, the attacks in Oslo. Um, right after that happened, we had people on our air talking about the situation via Hangout through that technology. Um, same thing goes when there were some um, presidential elections in France that were controversial about a woman who was wearing an Islamic veil. We were able to get reaction from someone in France um, talking about this issue. So this has greatly expanded our reach, um, not only in mid-Missouri, but also throughout the world. Um, Mike Downs, you are in Hello. the UK. Tell people how Hangout and how social media, um, maybe even after the UK riots there, um, but how specifically even Carrie Blakeman has been able to use social media in order to try to quell the riots or what they're doing in the UK with this technology. Uh, yes, my local police officer, Chief Inspector Kerry Blakeman, has been using Twitter extensively uh, through the UK riots and he managed to um, dole down everything in Coventry, UK that was happening uh, through the use of Twitter. However, in Birmingham, um, the, the riots did kick off uh, quite uh, largely. And the good news is that with somebody like Kerry Blakeman, he wishes to embrace as much social media as he can and he is now, uh, along with himself and the local fire commander, uh, moving on to 3G. Uh, mobile hangouts with the use of their iPhones, which is very good news. So, so a lot of people haven't heard of hangouts yet, but if you're a newsie, you need to because we will be using this technology a lot in the future. We have a chat function, so if you hit this bar, up pops a chat window and you can chat with people. There's a YouTube function once you're in a hangout, you click that, um, you can go to any YouTube video and watch it at the same time, have a 
group conversation about what you're watching. Um, we had fun in there with karaoke, so I'll put up karaoke for YouTube. And as I hang out, um, I'll sing in there. We're trying to learn technology. You can mute someone's, um, you can mute your own video. So say you're in a hangout and um, it's about ready to go on the air, but you're not ready yet. You can turn it to black on the that video. You also have the ability, and this is really important for, for users using this technology, to mute microphones. So if I, for instance, um, wanted to mute Captain Lamb, maybe he had a, a buzz on his line or he was saying something inappropriate, I could then mute his microphone. Now, with the current technology, he can unmute his microphone like that, but you at least for a split second um, have the ability to cut someone off or end the hangout as well. So this is a little bit about, um, about our live cyber couch that we use on Use It For. We're also bringing in more social media um, into our newscast. So if you watch the newscast, you'll see in the director of the newscast, Lindsay Tyler, back there has had to learn all of this new technology um, in order to put it on the air with, with uh, programs that haven't really even been developed yet in the US. We're working with the Norway company to try, try to bring their um, technology into our broadcast in order to display social media in semi-real time, um, something that because right now you have to reproduce social media. It comes in, you have to turn it into a nice fancy graphic or you have to copy and paste the text. Um, you have to create a graphic ID for the avatar. So um, this Norway company will do all of those steps in one for us and allow to display social media in real time. But for now, if you turn on the user form, you will see um, tweets, Facebook posts, if you tweet the hashtag you on TV, that's the letter U. Um, we'll display those tweets on the air. It's a conversation not just about um, things that are controversial, but also community service news as well. So we'll display those on the screen. So the two ways that people can connect with us on that show are Facebook, Twitter, and via Google Plus Hangout like this. What, what would you all say as, as regular contributors to this interactive newscast that has been different or eye-opening for you in that having the ability to have a voice in a news conversation. Kempton, if we can start with you. Hmm. Um, what's the question again? What do, we, what do you mean? Um, what has it been like for you as someone in Canada to be mm -hmm. able to have a voice in a television newscast and to be able to share your opinions, share what's going on in your world, have a group conversation about the news? Yeah, I think for one thing, it's un definitely unprece unprecedented. Uh, me in Canada, Calgary, I don't know how many people in uh, Columbia, Missouri has heard about uh, Calgary, and, and likewise here too. But now we are actively uh, participating in uh, sharing our part of the world to, to people in Columbia, and mid, mid ammo and uh, yeah, so, so that is really cool. Um, so yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Bruce, go ahead, Bruce. So, you know, just another aspect of the of the Google Plus Hangout feature like we're seeing here, as journalists, you may know, I, I like to produce and direct shows myself. And if you look at this space that you're looking at right now, and all these small icons, these live videos, these live video feeds along the bottom, they could actually be cameras. You can look at those as potentially 10 cameras out in the field. And you can be streaming that back into the studio live where the producer can actually be cutting to each one of those thumbnails to take it live on air. So, for instance, Sarah can green box me right now. She would lock up on me to take, to take an effect of, of what I'm talking about. And then as Kempton starts to talk or Mike starts to talk, she can put the green box around them, which basically freezes us in that large window above giving us the opportunity to, so to lock up on that particular signal for that piece. And if there's breaking news down the street and somebody else joins the hangout, she can cut to them in a snap. So do you see where he's talking about green boxing? See, if I, agree, if I click on Kempton, there is a green box that goes around him. And then Bruce say something. Hey, this is Bruce. <laughs> and see, it stays on Kempton because I green box Kempton. And watch that word because that will be showing up in a dictionary pretty soon. You've got the green box. Um, that's going to be a, a word of the, the future is green boxing. So and, and, and same being, with um, 
and being journalists, you want to create very interesting content. So that green box is around you all the time. Mm -hmm. And I want to add something to um, Sarah. For, for, we have been talking about uh, studio or uh, I guess a studio centric way of reporting news, but uh, in, in, in a sense, citizen journalists, I mean, you don't really need to have uh, a, a TV station in the back end. Like a group of uh, journalism students uh, or anyone actually can use this technology and then use live stream or some other streaming technology to stream whatever you have here out to the world. So I imagine this scenario in your local election, you, you're no longer relying on uh, any television station or any radio station newspaper to report on that. If it is interesting enough or important enough for you, the event, the election or whatever, you can have uh, nine different journalists out in the field reporting it and someone at, at home base and controlling this and then beaming it out via live stream. And the back end could be a studio, television studio like KOMU, but it could be your home studio, and then you, you could live stream it. Mm -hmm. And just yes, for the we record, say that, that stick in the ground that we call our TV tower someday is going to be obsolete, <laughs> and who knows if this if, if this might have the possibility to replace it. If there are any anchors, um, any people who are interested in anchor, anchoring coming up, you really need to learn not only this technology, but how to live stream from your laptop. Um, that is how we found um, great contributors for our newscast, was by hanging out behind the scenes of a newscast for a couple months, um, actually two or three months, I think it was, guys, yeah. before the show even started. Obviously, you cannot put anyone on the air um, you have to put someone on the air who you know will not give you an FCC violation, right? We can't have any F words um, on, on KOMU or a bunch of paperwork and, and, and a really um, lots of hefty fun. So you have to vet these people and get to know them. And how we did that and how we're continuing to do that is by inviting people to hang out with us behind the scenes of a newscast. We have a laptop right there. So essentially, people are watching us do the news, and the commercial breaks and sound bites, we're talking to them, um, asking them what's news to them, um, and just listening to some of their conversations. Um, one of our co-hosts not too long ago, Robert Reddell from Austria, mentioned that newscasts are kind of like a new campfire through which people are gathering around in order to have group conversations. Um, so that is how we met these individuals. And Michael, Mike Downs, you had something you wanted to add. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to add two things. Uh, what, the way I work, really. One is that um, as an ex-teacher and citizen journalist myself, I was broadcasting probably to a town of about 26,000. That went up to about half a million um, in the county of Warwickshire and Coventry. And then coming into the Hangouts, which is absolutely lovely because it gave me Google Plus the international appeal. But I think uh, one thing to point out here is that I normally work on a laptop with the Hangout screen to my right and on the left hand side have open Google Plus, Twitter and probably up to about eight or nine other browsers so while people might see us contributing within the Hangout we've also got like a very vigorous news gathering desk going on as we're working. Bruce? Yeah, just for the record, uh, Sarah was talking about that you can take this Hangout and live stream it. Uh, for the record, I am live streaming it right now, and I will share that with you later on, Sarah. Okay. And so if any of you are, are, all, are in my circles, and I'd encourage you to be in my circles because I want to be in your circles, um, you can see that streamed on there. How many of you guys know how to live stream? There he is. There he is. Here comes Robert. Bonjour. Robert, Robert <laughs> intro introduce yourself. <laughs> Introduce yourself and, and tell people where you're from. Hello, my name is Robert Redl. I'm from Vienna, Austria. And I'm also at the moment <clears throat> running live through the streets here. I can show you that we have rain at the moment. But for, for this very uh, exciting news uh, <clears throat> experience, um, yeah, we do not uh, be scared about any effort that's needed. And so you see a quite, uh, yeah, typical Viennese street with everybody hiding in taxis and public transport, and only Robert is on the street getting wet. So yeah, that's the kind of infrastructure we have here. So 
nobody is talking to you when you are on the street but you feel quite safe and can enjoy uh, do you see this um, this uh, street train yeah. this is uh, actually owned by by an American investor it is some example of cross-border leasing hey Robert yeah. Can you tell the students here who are watching this what kind of phone you're using? I'm currently using an iPad 2 at the moment. So this would also work with an iPod Touch, which is a very cheap, but at the moment I prefer the iPad. Uh, I prefer the iPad 2 because I also can use it uh, as an umbrella at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey Robert, can you give us uh, your best Arnold Schwarzenegger impression? Yes, uh, thank you very much for having me and uh, I'll be back. Hasta la vista. You got a big laugh here. So how interesting is that, the fact that this technology, and it's pretty clear off his iPad 2 or off his phone, that he's able to take us live and show us what's going on in Austria. Guys, when there is a big news event, if we have another Joplin tornado in our area, if we have another blizzard in our area, this technology will be front and center. And not a lot of stations are using it, so if you guys get to know how to use it, the next time we have a natural disaster or we have um, some kind of uh, event where we need to bring people back and talk about it, um, this will be, will be a great opportunity to do that. Um, is there any any questions about this technology? Robert, can you mute yourself? Yes. Let's say that you did want to use this on television. You want to set somebody up. You want somebody ready to go. Is there a way to talk to that other person? They are able to hear all of us in mass. So even though I'm talking to Michael, Michelle Spry in Columbia. Hi, Michelle Spry in Columbia. Hi, guys. She can still hear what I'm saying. So, for instance, with the Hangout, we had to talk about hand signals. Like the people in my in my Hangout know that this stands for. What does this stand for? Stand by. Stand by. Absolutely. <laughs> Stand by. So we essentially had to teach them hand signals in order so they knew when they were going to go live. Because obviously in Austria, if you're on a mobile hangout, you don't have the ability to hear um, what's going on. So that's how we communicate. They also communicate in this chat function. Hello, Joe Poglisi from New York um, on the left hand side. And they are they're talking. So we'll pr put producer notes or things like that in the in the other side. So they can hear us in mass. We cannot talk to them individually. Now, in the future, I would imagine that they will develop um, or enable a broadcast version of this. Because there are many things that we could use as a television station, um, like, for instance, to make the screen larger and fill up all of it. This is an old version of the Hangout. There's also a new version of the Hangout that fills the entire screen that I would encourage you guys to experiment with. It's a little bit buggy, so we don't use it on the air a whole lot, um, but it fills up the entire entire portion of the screen. Um, and in the future, who knows, they might even have the ability to put a rundown on that site um, for chat. Who knows? So that's why yeah. really <laughs> Absolutely. Everybody in here is vetted. Are you guys FCC approved or what? Absolutely. We're in oh, your yeah. <laughs> We have more than that. We're, we're in Sarah's approved circles. Yes, we are. Uh, does anybody, these guys actually came up with their own um, guide in order to um, approve people and to tell others about Hangout. Which one of you guys wants to talk about the guide? Kempton, do you want to talk about the guide that was put together by this group? Sure, yeah. We have a very extensive uh, broadcast guide that we, as a group, uh, created. And um, and a lot of us uh, edited together and whatnot. And right now, um, we actually added a whole new section uh, on mobile hangout guides, like the do's and uh, don'ts uh, in that section. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, yeah, it's it's something to help 
newcomers uh, use the technology better, and uh, it's a great way to initialize people, uh, uh, I guess, inform people when they first uh, use the technology. Yeah. So my, my apologies there. Um, so when, when more and more people are on Hangout and those you know, hanging out with us with phones, can you imagine a traffic situation, for instance, um, say it happens on some bridge somewhere? And they're stopped in traffic and they can't do anything. News stations can, can then say, join our hangout and tell us what you're seeking. You know, no need to really scramble up a satellite truck or a live truck to get out there. The fastest way that we're going to be able to get to these people, have them tell us and report it on what they're seeing, is via them coming to us via a hangout. So that's why mobile and enabled hangouts are so, you know, huge and uh, the wave of the future is the ability, you know, we don't have to go to them, they're now coming to us. And you see how this technology is a little bit, you know, a lot more superior to Skype? Why might that, that be? Who has a reason why this might be superior to Skype? Besides the fact that you can Skype in 10 different people in a chat room. What's an, a, another reason why this is superior? Am I know? Yes. Right, it has telepresence technology, and telepresence technology is actually developed by Cisco, so that whoever's talking is up in the, in the big box, in the green box of the screen. So that, you're right, that is, um, that is beneficial. But the reason why Google Plus Hangout is, is beneficial is because Michael Nass is from Texas, is because it's attached to a crowdsourcing tool, right? How do you think we found people in Norway? How do you think we found people um, from France to talk about the presidential elections or to find people to talk about Occupy Wall Street? We found them because Google Plus Hangout is attached to a crowdsourcing tool, right? So we could put out a query on Google Plus saying, I am looking for someone, and we did it to journalists initially. Um, journalists, we are looking for someone who's experienced um, the aftermath of the, of the Oslo bombing, please let us know. Um, we're also looking for Norwegians to talk about the Oslo bombing because many of them said that it was essentially their Oklahoma City or their 9-11, what they were experiencing. So it's Skype attached to a Facebook, essentially. Not only do you have the ability to put people on video speed dial, but you also have a video phone book in order to find those individuals. So that's what makes it so you need. What are you doing there? Robert, tell us what you're doing. I, I just want to, uh, to show you the, the device itself. So I'm currently in the Hangout both from the iPad and on the PC. So this could also be used to have two, uh, two different views of the same scene, for example. If you, if you do an interview, I could have uh, have it front face and and also have some detail uh, on the other hand. So uh, I don't know where now the lens is. Yeah, here. So uh, if I if I want to show a detail of a scene and the interview partner, yeah, we can switch like that. And the totally amazing thing is that this device is totally uh, mobile, and I can have maybe two hours of hangout presence without any cable, and it would also be possible uh, with the iPod Touch if you have no rainy conditions. <laughs> um, Michael Nast, if you can tell us a little bit, um, you're in a room full of future journalists, but who knows, some of them might go into sales as well. Talk about how you're using this technology um, as it relates to live storefronts and car dealerships, if you don't mind. Uh yeah, basically what we're trying to do, especially with apartments, owners, and uh, car dealerships, is to use live stream hangouts as a customer service tool, also a website conversion tool to where people who come to a website see a customer service representative on, on, on the website live, and if they have a Google Plus account, they can go straight into the hangout and, and communicate with that person if not, we have it on a live stream where they can also 
participate without a Google Plus in the chat room. Okay. So that's just one of the ways that they're using it for sales as well. Lots of possibilities. I mean, people are, are also using it for um, like the story meeting of the day. Okay, you're wondering what should I talk about today? You guys are needing to come to prepare to KOMU or KDIA or the Missourian. What should I cover today? Well, open up a public hangout, um, invite some of your, your local viewers in and ask them, hey, what's news to you? What better way to get a story idea and establish that um, face to face connection with your viewers? Tweeting and Facebooking your viewers is great, but it's purely text based. This, via a Google Plus Hangout, you're able to engage with your viewers on a whole another level, right? Because who would you rather do business with or who would you rather get views from? Someone who tweets and Facebooks you or someone who you can have a face-to-face -face, um, communication with, right? If Brian Williams would let me in his Hangout, I would watch him all the time, right? Because I could see Brian Williams from, from a, a different perspective. So viewer engagement, it also ramps it up just another level. Any other questions before I let I, before I let these guys go? Yes. Do you, do you worry at all about excluding people who don't have access to any of this technology? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And here's how we're remedying that situation. Um, we always say on our show that you don't need an iPad or an iPhone or a laptop in order to hang out with us or in order to contribute to the conversation. We've read comments on the air from someone who's written it down on a paper napkin, someone brought a, a 10 pound zucchini once to share with us. We read emails and we also air phone calls as well. But this technology, here's how we're enabling anyone to use it. You do not have to have, to have a Google Plus account in order to join our Hangouts. Um, through a grant from the Reynolds Journalism Institute, they have webcam enabled all of the libraries in the 14 county viewing area in Missouri. So if there is a community service group, for instance, who wants to share their message, no longer do they have to come out to the TV station, wait through the entire show, or do we have to tie up a camera going to get that? Um, they are coming to us, and Lindsay spends a lot of her time recording <laughs> some of the um, interviews. That they can go to the local library, and they have a webcam and a Google Plus account, and they're uh, able to join our cyber couch. So no internet access, no problem. Um, you still have the ability to contribute to the conversation. And that's a big concern as more news organizations get more technical and require devices and things like that and social media accounts in order to, to contribute to the conversation, that we also be cognizant of the fact that not everybody has that internet access. So that's an excellent question. Any other questions there before I let them let these guys go? How how else have you guys? Oh, Bruce, go ahead, Bruce. Sir, I was just going to suggest that if any of the students there decide that they want to give Google Plus Hangouts a try, you know, have them feel free to circle me, and I'm sure everybody else in this particular Hangout would feel the same to reach out to us, mention to us that they found us and connected with us through you in this presentation that you're giving and would be more than happy to help them learn some of the tips and tricks that we've learned over the past few months since Google Plus has started. They are a great, not only resource for Hangout, but a great, great uh, technological resource. Um, helped me through many of my jams as far as figuring out how to live stream and um, work Macs and things like that. Joseph Puglisi, uh, if you can tell the students here how we met. Sure. There was a mutual friend, uh, Ken Beasley, in whom uh, I've had a couple of hangouts. We've been chatting. I was learning about this technology myself, and she invited me into a hangout with Sarah to see what things looked like behind the scenes in the studio. Uh, it was fascinating to me, and uh, it was a great opportunity to get involved in using this technology in groundbreaking television journalism. And actually, Joseph and I, I think, might have met for the first time when I asked if he wanted to comment on one of our stories. Um, I don't remember what story it was, but uh, yeah, that, yeah. that is, in addition, how you all can build your, your circles. When you go do stories, you know, mm -hmm. if, if your story has an international bent, open up a Hangout. And there are, is technology out there in order to record those things and, and then use those people as sources. 
Guys, yeah. I'm going to Might have been ahead. the uh, might have been the uh, social networking uh, student teacher law. I think that's what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Yep, in Missouri, absolutely. Any parting thoughts for these future future journalists in the room? So as you just remember to have fun. And Say it again, Michelle. Just remember to have fun. And what Michelle means about that by having fun that since we've been hanging out with Sarah in the newsroom live as she as she goes live with you news. We've come up with a little bit of game to continue to have this fun that most people that are watching or on television don't get to know. But since you're with us today, we'll let you in on the secret. We always give Sarah a word of the day that she has to work into the broadcast. And sometimes it's just off the wall type of words that she does a tremendous job at. But we do it just to have a, a good time and to, and, to, and to tease Sarah a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely. We did that once during a morning show at 4.30 in the morning. It was the only thing that, that kept us awake. So we got to do it more in the, in the afternoons. So yes. we'll have to start that now that I've got the workflow down. So <laughs> guys, thank you, each and every one of you. I so appreciate your time. And if you'll notice, Robert, see how he's on his um, iPad on one and his regular um, computer on the other. You can join a Hangouts. <laughs> 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 Bless your heart, Robert. Did Sarah mention that I'm 40 and single? <laughs> <laughs> you all the the whole room of 20 year 20 year olds erupted in laughter. That's awesome. <laughs> hey guys, thank you, thank you so much. See you guys. Always a pleasure, Sarah. Always a pleasure.